friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Most of you tune in to watch my videos on building and repairing musical instruments, and I have nearly 600 videos on YouTube about that subject. But there's another subject which I won't call myself an expert, but I will definitely call myself a very knowledgeable user of chainsaws. <laughs> I've been using chainsaws since I was a kid. I seriously believe, and you can you know, turn it off right now if you don't believe me, that I cut more firewood for personal use than anybody on the planet. And I say anybody on the planet. For personal use. In other words, I cut it, I split it, I, I use it myself in my wood furnace. I don't think anybody uses more wood that way than I do. And that's just my firm belief. And the reason I say that is because I burn about a quart of wood every three days when it's really cold. When I say really cold, I'm talking in the 20s, you know, mid-20s and lower, I burn a quart of wood every three days. Higher than that, I burn a quart of wood about every four to five, six days. Already this winter, it's just about uh, the 22nd or so of January, maybe 23rd, I don't know. Anyway, I've already burned... I seriously, I couldn't even count how many cords of firewood I burned. I couldn't even count how many wagon loads, pickup loads, dump truck loads of firewood I've burned. I, it's, it would be impossible to count. All I can tell you is I burn a lot of wood. I put about two contractor wheelbarrows full of wood into the wood furnace in the morning and two in the evening. That's four contractor wheelbarrows full of wood per day and it's always empty when I go back out there. Now, you know, immediately people are gonna be jumping to all kinds of conclusions. I need to insulate my house, I need to do this, I need to do that. Trust me, been there, done that. You couldn't come here and offer one suggestion that I haven't tried, or at least that is practical to try. Been there, done that. It's just a gigantic house. It's nearly 7,000 square feet of concrete floors. I have shut off well over half of it. We only heat about half of it during the winter, but it was built back at a time when they didn't know anything about, you know, thermal breaks or insulations or anything, and that concrete just sucks the cold into the house. And we just happen to be lucky, and we're in a valley that is always, and this is the thing people really have trouble believing, it's always 13, 12 to 13 degrees colder in this valley than it is just five miles away from here. We check our uh, thermometers as we come through Doolittle, Missouri, which is about the high point, and it'll say 32 degrees. When we get down here, it's like 20 or 22 degrees. I mean, it can vary. It can be 8 degrees colder, or it can be up to 13 degrees colder. The average is about mm, probably 8 or 9 degrees colder on average, and it can be as much as 13 degrees colder. That's the coldest I've ever seen. Anyway, my whole point in this is to talk to you about, you know, I'm just telling you all those things to let you understand that I know my way around firewood. <laughs> There's nobody knows it really any better than I do for personal use. Now, I'm not saying I could compete with these commercial guys. That's not what I'm saying. So here we go. Take a look at this deal here. I put out a video about two or three years ago, <laughs> told of all the problems I was having with this and told you how to reverse this motor to get rid of the burrs and all those things. All those things were necessary until I learned a couple of more things about this machine. And they're not my fault. I can tell you for sure. This thing was manufactured incorrectly. That's how I figured it out finally. I just accidentally did the wrong thing and it turned out to be the right thing. So that's what I'm going to show you here. And you will not believe. I, I put up with this thing for 15, 16 years. And you say, why don't you just file them by hand? Well, when you got seven or eight chains to file and you know you cut as much firewood as I cut and you got six or seven chainsaws, you know, and right now I only have three chainsaws that are actually physically working, but they, they're good enough. But the point is, when you got all that to do all the time, and I run a business here on the side, I don't have time to be filing chains by hand. I gotta do it the fastest possible way I can do it. 
Well now it's really fast and I've got a couple of improvements here to show you. But if you do want to learn how to turn a small motor, it really doesn't have to be a chainsaw motor. It could be you know, a chainsaw sharpening motor. It can be almost any kind of an AC motor and you want to reverse it. A quick and dirty way to reverse it, well check out my other video. So let's take a look at this chainsaw sharpener. It's an Oregon 511A and I found out that this thing is actually manufactured wrong. And the reason I was having to jump through all those hoops in the previous video was because this thing is just made wrong. Right here is zero. When you turn it this way 25 or 30 degrees, then you can turn it this way 25 or 30 degrees and cut the angles on your chain with this cutter right here. But the problem is this one is off by five degrees. Anyway, when you switch this from one side to the other, you should be able to you know, replicate the degrees of angle. This cutter should cut the appropriate angle on your chain. This one's off by at least five degrees. I'm not sure if that's an included five degrees or if it's actually 10 degrees. But the bottom line is, on this side, I have to set it on 30. On this side, I have to set it on 25. If I do that, this thing works like a dream. It works perfectly. It absolutely works perfectly. The problem is it only took me 15 or 16 years to figure that out because I could never get consistent results. It would cut way more off of one side than the other side. And if you know anything about the teeth on those chains, they're angled like this. So when you cut more off of this side, well then this side is taller and so it's going to cut first and it's going to pull your chain off to one side. Now some guys tell me that doesn't make any difference. You can file them by hand. It doesn't make any difference how long those teeth are. Well, I'm telling you for sure, if that doesn't make any sense to you, then you need to start thinking a little bit more because anytime one tooth is much longer and sticking up much higher, it's going to drag first. Now if you can't understand that, then I don't know how to help you. But that's what the problem was with this thing. It was driving me crazy. And because of that also, it was, you know, I guess it was doing something weird and, you know, causing a big burr on there. Bottom line is, now that I have figured this out, it works perfectly. And I'm going to show you here how it works here in just a moment. But before we get to that, in addition, from people watching that first video, they said, get rid of these crazy discs here put in one of these, I guess, diamond cutter discs. This one here says uh, Foley Bell Saw Sharpening. This one is for the smaller chain. Well, they're called CBN wheels, I believe is the term for them. I'm gonna read the one long number here, which is 3700673CBN. Now they make these for the small chains and for the bigger chains. This one is like the quarter inch wheel here and it replaces this quarter inch wheel. I take that back, this is a 3 16 wheel and this, this is a 3 16 also. So I take that back. So anyway, my point is, now, once I put this on here, it changed everything. In terms of the cut, this cuts so much better. No heat, doesn't change the color of your chain anymore. It just cuts like butter. I'm telling you, you need to go to these. These are very expensive. They're like a hundred bucks a piece. These are cheap, but you get what you pay for. If you sharpen a lot of chains, go to this. I guarantee you, you'll thank me, you'll bless me. And then put this thing in a drawer and save it for a really, really rainy day when you can't do anything else. And then go to the drawer, pick this up and throw it away. You'll have something to do that day. So there you go. So we're we'll gonna put this on 30. We gotta lock it down here, get it right on 30 exactly. Lock it down. I'll just pick up one of my random chains here. This one happens to be well used, by the way. I haven't got this set up for this at all, so it'll take me a few seconds to set it up here. The last chain I cut on this was the small chain, the little, I don't know what you call it, 1 8 chain or whatever. This is the 3 16 or whatever size chain. It'll take me a few seconds to get it adjusted. Actually, it's looking pretty close. I think I've got it adjusted, and um, I have that diamond wheel spinning. I have it set on 30 degrees on this side, and uh, it probably needs just a tiny bit more into it, so I'm gonna turn it just a little bit and cut it again. That's pretty good. You skip a tooth, and you cut the next one. This really cuts it smooth and clean and hardly any sparks. 
compared to the other grinding wheels. Some people say you need to mark your chain, you need to mark your chain so you know when you get back to it. Well, really it cuts so accurately, you can tell when you get back to it because it doesn't cut. But you can see how fast how fast you can go through a chain and how accurately you can go through a chain with this. It is so much better now that I've discovered the problem with this thing. I tried every way in the world to make this thing center and it would not center on that blade for nothing until I found out there's a problem with the angle. We'll soon be through with this side. Won't take much longer. We're through on that side. Now all I have to do is swing it around to 25 degrees on this side. Lock it down. And it cuts absolutely perfectly. I will tell you another trick is as you put this tight, you know, put your finger on there, make sure it's seated down all the way. Like that. And that way everything's in the same position every time. And it only takes a couple of minutes to go all the way around the chain. And you can see there's no heat whatsoever. There's no discoloring of the chain whatsoever. And that's all due to those new wheels. I think that's it right there. Yep, we're through. It, uh, it just does a wonderful job. Now I get these, uh, I get these diamond wheels from sharpeningsupplies.com, I believe is what it's called. They don't sponsor me, but they should. And you, if you start buying from them, you ought to tell them where you heard about it. Maybe they will sponsor me. You just never know. I want to show you a close-up. There's no discoloration whatsoever of the chain. This is a very well-used chain. You can see it's toward the end of its useful life, but it just cuts it perfectly. Another advantage of using a sharpener like this over doing it by hand, I mean, first of all, when it's working well like this one, it's crazy fast. So it's so much faster and it's so much more accurate because it's exactly in the same place. Every tooth gets sharpened exactly the same. I'm not kidding you. With the new disc, with the new sharpening disc, this thing cuts like a brand new blade. Even this old blade, this far back, will cut like a brand new blade. I'm not kidding you, it cuts so good. So I sharpen up six or seven blades at a time, and I call them blades again. I know somebody's going to get upset. You don't even know what it is. It's a chain. It's a chain, okay? I know what it is. But it, it's still, it's like a blade going through the wood, you know, it just cuts it so well. And so the point is, I recommend using a sharpener like this if you have a lot of sharpening to do, but if you happen to have the Oregon 511A, the one that is made in Italy, and you've had trouble with it, and you, so you put it on the shelf because you got frustrated, get it off the shelf, when you turn it to the right, adjust it to 30. When you turn it to the left, adjust it to 25 and see if that don't fix your problem. It sure fixed the problem for these. It makes this such a pleasant job compared to the drudgery I was going through before. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, hopefully Melissa can make something out of this video and you'll enjoy it and uh, give me a thumbs up. So thank you very much for watching. Yeah, yeah.